Welcome back to part two of our Cryptek Hydrographics Camouflage Su-27, working on the old Airfix mo 172 scale model. I started assembling, you know, what we needed for the bottom half of the plane. These intakes need some work. They are two pieces each. They're kind of a, a, a one side, three quarter, and then uh, the other side. The fit on them is is okay, not great. Um, you can see one of them needs to be sanded down a little bit, and then there's a little bit of a, a lip that needs to be sanded down over here on the surface. And there's um, interior-wise, uh, if we want it to really look good, we've got to, now that it's glued, we've got to sand down those, those little locator bits that are in there. Or, uh, we just got to install the FOD screens that come with it, whatever we're going to do. So I am going to get to sanding these down so we have a, a better fit on the fuselage and over there. And then we'll see where we're at. There's not much cockpit to speak of in this Airfix kit. Very, very basic. And I'm not doing too much because the real showpiece is, is here is the, the hydrographics job we did. So very basic work on the cockpit. I've got a K36 seat to put in it, but I, I just wanted to get this done so that we can mount it in there and start getting the fuselage assembled. The only things that we're gonna install internal on the lower fuselage before we made it to the top are the insides of the engines. So there's, there's nothing ducting wise that goes in the intakes. I'll talk about what we're doing with the intakes in a little bit. And I added, of course, one little fishing weight to the nose. I, I like to do that just in case uh, all the time with with uh, aircraft, just to make sure we don't end up with a tail sitter, just in case. So that is uh, drying with some super glue. And now we're ready to start putting the upper fuselage, which has the cockpit tub assembly in there to the lower and this is where this is where I'm a little nervous because I got to be real careful with the seams around there and there and there so that we don't mess up our fine hydrographics work so again I'm going to do that off camera so I can have all attention paid to that to make sure that goes on nice and clean and then we'll we'll come back these intakes had some pretty bad ejector pin marks on the inside of the sides. So I used some old, where is it? There it is. Some Vallejo plastic putty and filled them in. And I used the FOD screens in there because there's really nothing to see. So a little bit of sanding uh, to even them out. And by the way, we've got some good work going on mating the fuselage halves. There's going to be some serious filling and sanding, um, especially around this area on the leading edge extensions. Um, things made it up pretty well around the stinger. We've got a little bit of sanding to do on the edges there, but on the fuselage, forward sides and everything. So these needed just a little bit of sanding to help them sit relatively even. A little bit of uh, sanding and filling and everything is going to go to get them to sit nice and flush, but not bad, not bad. I've seen much worse. So I'll get those mounted on. And uh, just a little bit more work getting the wings joined on. Then we'll be ready to move on to some, uh, so some next steps. I have the major construction done that we need to get done so we can start doing our primer on the lower surfaces. I have exhausts that are very, I don't know what shape they're supposed to have. They're not a flanker shape, but this is what we got. Um, and I have the, the ventral fins, um, pro, you know, ready to get primed. I have landing gear doors ready, all those kinds of surfaces. So the only thing that I don't have done right now are our pylons, because I'm going to do them separately. So what I have to do before we do all that is very carefully mask off all these other areas that we don't want the paint to touch at all. So I'll do that and then we will get to putting on our black primer on the undersurfaces so that it matches the upper and we can worry about metallics and all that stuff. And then we'll get to uh, another set of masking off some areas so that we can start with our 
our metallics, and our undersurface colors. Quite a bit of taping to protect the upper surfaces while we gave the gloss black base again to the bottom. So we're prepared for the metallic areas on the bottom and also we'll just use it as a primer. And there's just gonna be a little bit of an anti-glare panel, just a little bit on the front and the canopies are, are done. So I'm gonna leave the tape in place. Um, hopefully, yeah, it's not it's not gonna pull anything off the top because it is, you know, hydrographics are pretty good once they're on. And then I gave it a quick uh, clear acrylic coat of aqua gloss, if we remember. So I'm ready to do some metallic work to get that done, and then I can clear coat all of that, and we'll get the, the top and bottom. I'm gonna have to do a little bit more taping up now so that I can paint around, you know, just shift some tape around and do the metallic work. And metallic work uh, for the engine areas on a flanker can be pretty extensive, uh, pretty complicated. Now, because this is not a 100% realistic flanker, we have a little bit more room, a little bit more artistic freedom to work with. Um, I still want it to look semi-real. We have these very, you know, odd um, burner cones to work with. Um, but I think it'll. We'll, we'll do something good. We'll do something that is sort of mostly realistic, but still also um, just a little bit simpler than than the standard um, to make it a little bit quicker. Because I want to get this. Want to get this done. A little bit faster and um, have some fun with it so let me adjust the masking here so that we can uh, get some metallic paint going and then we'll we'll be back and I'll actually show the metallic work on camera all of the metallic work that we're gonna do on this is all with outside metallics so starting with the the burner cones here this is a mix of pale burnt metal with hot metal blue and it's kind of layered in. So I put the pale burnt metal in and then I just dropped the pale metal, uh, sorry, the hot metal blue on top, didn't mix it up. And it's really nice because we start with a, a layer of the, the burnt metal and then the blue just kind of goes on top of it to show some heated effects and it works out really nice. Uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, do these areas, then I'm gonna peel the tape and, and remask, and then I'm gonna switch out the blue for some hot metal violet to get a, a little contrast that you see kind of a two-tone effect on some real flankers. And then I'm going to do uh, some uh, airframe aluminum mixed with a little bit of uh, pill burnt metal for some of the other areas uh, on the burner cone. And I think it's going to be fairly true to life, but, but a little bit um, exaggerated for, for our kind of custom flanker here. I think it's going to be a nice effect. here is actually a custom mix I made of different shades of aluminum and uh, chrome from Alclad. So this is just going to form the base of the metallic work on the engine areas and then I'm going to do different amounts of hot metal blue, hot metal sepia, and uh, hot metal violet. And I'll also do some uh, painting by hand on some of the smaller panels with some ammo of MIG, um, some matte aluminum and some silver just to make some contrast and some highlights on some of the smaller panels. Now remember that in this small scale and in this project, I'm not going for 100% accuracy for what a real flanker looks like, but I'm going for a, a just close enough to make it look like it could be a real flanker out in the world. Really just trying to suggest the complexity that is the metallic area on the flanker engine and exhaust. You might notice that these small panel areas end up looking a little bit sloppy when it's all done, but it's okay because once we start putting in some panel liner and everything and some washes, they will blend in a lot better to the rest of the work around them.
And now just a light coat of aqua gloss over the metallics to seal them in and give them a little bit of protection before we tape over them to do the rest of the painting. Given our clear coat a little time to dry on our metallic areas, it's looking pretty good. So now I can switch some of this masking to protect the metallic areas and then get ready to do our lower surface coat, which is going to be A10 blue lower surface, which I think works pretty nice. It's a very light blue color, which will look good for there. So I'll get that wrapped up and start spraying this on all the underside pieces and uh, we'll get going on that. Next part we're gonna do is painting the dielectric panels. There's quite a few on the flanker. So we're gonna do that in gunship gray. This is not a standard color for the flanker, but nothing we're doing here is standard color anyway. I think it'll look good with the colors we're, we're using. It'll stand out, but it'll also have kind of a tactical subdued color with everything else we're, we're going with. So I've masked off with some parafilm and some masking tape for the top of the verticals and the standard panel we see on the vertical there. We've got the one on the spine, the one under the nose, um, and then I'll hand paint some smaller ones around the fuselage as well. I like using Vallejo Air as well as the Vallejo Games Airline because you can spray it just straight from the bottle through the airbrush, no problem, and it comes out really nice. gunship gray dry for just a little bit just using some regular old super glue some CA glue to attach the vertical and horizontal stabilizers and you don't see it here but I'll attach the little uh, ventral fins a little later on before I do the the final gloss coat to lock all this paint work in Given this one big coat of Tamiya, here it is. 
X22 clear all around just to kind of protect especially the ACAN paint can be very fragile um, it's a very light paint so I, I put it on very light coats to um, you know especially to keep our weathering effect and our, our pre-shading and everything um, but to give it a uniform shine um, and to protect all the work we did so you'll notice that we still have not done anything in the gear wells so we're gonna have to do that next but again I want to protect all this a can this nice work we did on the underside before we start masking a lot on it and everything I have all of oh, quite there they are I have landing gear doors um, and hard points and everything I have another sprue with the nose gear door pieces and everything but so we're gonna let this sit and cure overnight and uh, just basically if you press too hard you can still get fingerprints on this at this point but we're just about ready before we do those final steps um, before we can start putting on some markings and just touch up a few of these little areas where there were air bubbles in the hydrographics film and stuff but then we can start moving on to where we pick out our armament and all sorts of fun stuff and start getting this flanker which already I think looks pretty good I mean pretty nice especially considering the the age of the kit and you know some of the inaccuracies there but start getting it really dressed up and looking looking nice and and it's playing its role as our as our cool fantasy flanker we'll figure out the rest of the details soon so please join me for the next part where we start working on the fine details and everything like that hope you've enjoyed seeing the process so far for all you guys building out there in model land keep building them build them well and i'll see you again next time